So we are uh, working in Greenwich uh, as uh, part of the, the government funded work on uh, autonomous vehicles and we're, we're going to be leading a project called Gateways. It's going to be starting in the next week or two uh, following a launch that you may have seen uh, covered quite widely uh, on, the, uh, on the TV uh, at the start of the year. It's an eight million pound project, it's going to be uh, conducted over two years. We're going to be demonstrating the kinds of use cases that we can put autonomous vehicles to. We're going to be really looking at the way that people interact with those vehicles. Uh, and in doing that, we want to create an environment for autonomous vehicle testing within the UK. Uh, we have uh, limited at the moment uh, technologies in terms of uh, creating autonomous vehicles, but we want to encourage not only UK developers to start using uh, test environments like this and start creating the autonomous vehicles of the future, but also we are going to be uh, bringing in investment from overseas in order to do that. So key themes in terms of uh, vehicle technologies, you'll be aware and you'll see the driver assistance uh, systems that we, we were talking about earlier uh, on, on vehicles. I think Andy uh, had a list of uh, a different driver assistance systems earlier. We have electronic safety, which is really the next step beyond that, where we have communication between the vehicles and the environment. So vehicle to vehicle communication, vehicle to infrastructure communication, coming on as that next layer on top of the vehicle sensing its own environment and helping the driver. Clearly, we, we then have Autonomy, we have that, those autonomous vehicles connected to a much wider data environment through whereby uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence will start to improve the way in which those vehicles function. New mobility services, the sorts of vehicles that we're looking at, the sort of shuttle devices, the sort of pods that are being looked at from uh, an autonomous perspective in the current projects. Uh, will offer new sorts of uh, mobility solution into cities and, and that's, that's happening now. All these vehicles will be connected of course, so our connected vehicles, our safety within vehicles will become uh, part of the overall package within, uh, with it, in terms of what's being supplied by the OEMs. And that provision of extra connectivity within our vehicles is actually going to want to encourage us to, to do other things when we're in, in the car. So at the moment we're driving, we, we have 100% presumably of our, our attention being uh, fixed on the driving task. As we get more connected vehicles with more opportunity to do other things inside the vehicle, we see a demand growing for increasing autonomy or, or autonomous services within vehicles. And of course this is all as well being uh, supported by a move to more electric and sustainable mobility types. The claims impact, I think we, we've already talked about the potential for significantly lower claims, lower claims volumes, and that's in terms of severity, incident severity, and in terms of numbers. And we're going to be starting to see new, new forms of uh, accident causation and contribution, new, new modes of, of these uh, contributions through the human, failing to deal with the uh, autonomous systems around it, potentially from the autonomous systems not being able to deal with what's happening outside the vehicle, particularly with uh, vulnerable road users, uh, and issues around autonomous and non-autonomous traffic mix. So it's easy to potentially network a lot of vehicles and not get them not to, uh, to collide with each other. But when we have drivers driving vehicles as we normally do in amongst autonomous vehicles, then we are, we'll again be getting conflict in those situations. So the factors of uh, unavoidable collisions, 80% potentially fatal pedestrian fatalities not being prevented. I think we, there's, there's sort of ethical issues here and questions around how society will view that, how the courts will view that, that we need to consider and that, that will be very important in terms of how the, uh, how the manufacturers choose to deploy these types of systems. And that, will be reflected in the type of litigation potentially that uh, arises as a result. Issues around OEM implementation of human machine inter interface to really control that uh, driver disengagement, re-engagement process. The allowance of human factors, so understanding the fact that, that the human is the fallible part of this equation. The testing of, the legal testing of uh, autonomous vehicle performance 
the sensor performance of vehicles, the, the decision logic that is being uh, put into play when a vehicle is deciding what to do, and in the occasion when it goes wrong, understanding whether that was the best decision that could possibly be made. My background is in forensic accident investigation. I go to court uh, uh, quite often to give expert evidence around uh, uh, individuals' decision making in terms of uh, accident scenarios. And exactly the same, I think, will be uh, happening in terms of uh, autonomous vehicles. <laughs>